this is where the optic nerve exceeds. From there, uh, it travels through the fatty tissue behind the eyes in, the, in their bony orbit. So this is the bony orbit. Then pass through the holes. So this is the ho these are the holes. So they, they pass through the holes in the floor of the skull. So this is where the holes. So the optic nerve from both eyes uh, combine to form the optic chiasm. So as you can see in this picture. So the optic nerve from both eyes combine to form the optic chiasm, which lie at the base of the brain, just anterior to the pituitary gland dangles down. So the, at the optic chiasm, the axons originating in the nasal area cross, so example nito, itong, itong blue na ito. So the optic chiasm, uh, the axons originating in the nasal retinas cross from one side to the other. So as you can see, no, meron siyang crossing. So the crossing of a fiber bundle from one side of the brain to the other is called decussation. So yung term lang na importante dyan is decussation. So the full visual field is the entire region of space uh, that can be seen with both eyes looking straight ahead. So, so now imagine a vertical line passing through the fixation point. Dividing the visual fields into left and right halves. So objects appearing to the left, left, uh, left of the midline are in the left visual hemifield. So here, the left visual hemifield. And objects appearing to the right, right of the midline are also called as the right visual hemifields. The, on the other hand, binocular visual field here is the central portion of both visual field viewed by both retinas. So object in the binocular region of the left visual hemifield will be imaged in the nasal retina of the left eye and the, the temporal retina of the right eye. Um, because, of the because the fibers from the nasal portion of the left retina cross to the right side at the optic chiasm, all information about the left Visual hemifield is directed to the right side of the brain. So, ganun pala yan siya. <laughs> so, optic nerves cross in the optic chiasm, such the left okay, visual hemifield. Ano yung pagkakaintindi mo, Mekong, before? Ano yung before? Abin ako, wala siyang mga decusation, decusation. <laughs> so, naaday siya mga decusation, decusation na nahita mo. <laughs> anyway, um, optic nerve fibers cross in the optic chiasm such that the left hemifield is viewed by the right hemisphere and the right visual hemifield is viewed by the left hemisphere. So, yun yung point lang ng, ng, ng picture na ito. Now, let's proceed with the targets of the optic tracks. So, the targets of the optic tracks. So, a small number of optic tracks axons peel off to form a synaptic connection with cells in the hypothalamus. So, dito siya yung iba. While 10% enervate the midbrain here, and most of them enervate the lateral geniculate nucleus of the dorsal thalamus or the LGN. So, this is the LGN here. So, the neurons in the LGN give rise, so the neurons in the LGN here, uh, give rise to axons that project to the primary visual cortex, which is here. This projection from the LGN to the cortex is called optic radiation. So ito yung tawag natin optic radiation. So optic radiations are axons from the neurons in the LGN, nucleus to the primary visual cortex. So lesions anywhere in the retinofugal projection from the eye to the visual cortex in human cause blindness in part or all of the visual field. Therefore, we know that it is this pathway that negates conscious visual perception. So our knowledge of how the visual world is represented in the retinofugal projection 
help us predict the types of perceptual differences that will result from its destruction at different level. <coughs> Excuse me. So if the optic nerve on the left side here, example in this picture, no, uh, on the left side is cut, vision will be lost uh, completely in the left eye. Blindness is only in the monocular portion of the left hemifield because the right eye still sees most of the left visual, left visual field. On the other hand, if the optic tract Kapag optic track naman, on the left side is cut, vision will be lost in the right visual field of each eye. So, yan na yung decusation kasi nag-decusate na dito yung pipe. So, if the optic kayasam naman is involved or slid down, which is the middle, only the crossing fibers will be damaged and the peripheral vision will be lost in both eyes. So, example in this picture, you know, the peripheral vision is lost as manifested by black color no? on both sides. So now let's proceed with the non-thalamic targets of the optic tract. So as we have said, some retinal ganglion cells and axons to innervate structures other than the LGN. Uh, direct projection to the part of the hypothalamus play an important role in synchronizing a variety of biological rhythms, including sleep and wakefulness with the daily dark light cycle. So hypothalamus for sleep and wakefulness and daily life cycle. Direct projection to part of the midbrain called the pretectum control the pupil size or the size of the pupil and certain types of eye movement. So pupil size. So that's in the midbrain, particularly the pretectum. About 10% of the ganglion cells naman in the retina project to a part of the midbrain tectum called the superior colliculus or Latin for little heel, which is responsible for the saccadic eye movement, which means the quick jumps in one eye position used to scan across a page while reading. So saccadic eye movement, superior colliculus. Uh, so this is the LGN uh, viewed in cross-section. No? Each LGN appears to be arranged in six distinct layers. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is located <coughs> in the dorsal thalamus and are the major targets of the optic tract. So karamihan ng optic tract, papunta talaga siya kay LGN. So the LGN, that is the gateway to the visual cortex, and therefore, to conscious visual perception. So, LGN neurons receive synaptic input from the retinal ganglion cells. Most LGN, as mentioned, project an axon to the primary cortex via the optic radiation. So, the right LGN here receives information about the left visual field and the left visual field is viewed both by the nasal left retina and the, the, the temporal right retina. At the LGN, input from the two eyes is kept separate. In the right LGN, the right eye axon synapse on AGN cells in layer two and three and five. While the left eye axon synapse on cells in layer one, four and six which is nice to know. So now let's proceed with the anatomy of the slate cortex. So the LGN has a single major synaptic target, which is the primary visual cortex. The primary visual cortex, this is important to know. So the primary visual cortex is known as the Broadman's area 17 and is located in the occipital lobe of the primate brain. So much of area 17 lies on the medial surface of the hemisphere, so surrounding the calcarine fissure. So this is the calcarine fissure. So other terms used interchangeably to describe the primary visual cortex are V1 and straight cortex. So the straight refers to the fact that area V1 
has unusually dense type of myelinated axon running parallel to the surface that appears white in unstained section. So Broadman's area 17, take note, is also known as the primary visual cortex located in the occipital lobe, also known as V1 or straight cortex. So the input and output of the straight cortex. In the visual cortex, only a subset of the layers is to input from the LGN or send output to the front cortical or subcortical area. Axons from the LGN terminates in different cortical layers with the largest number going to layer 4C. So each neuron in layers 4C and 4 uh, receive afferents from a layer of the LGN representing the left or the right eye. Uh, these neurons are monocular, responding to light only in one of the eyes. And the axons li leaving layer 4C diverge and elevate more superficial vertical layer, mixing the input from the two eyes, most neurons in layer superficial to 4C. So binocularity, the ability to maintain visual focus on an object, with both eyes creating a single visual image. So binocular receptive fields are neurons with two receptive fields, one in the lateral eye and one in the express by the cells within a visual cortex. <coughs> when such cells increase impulse or signal activity for a specific oriented degree of shape presented within the visual field. So this is where the analysis of object and shape. So dorsal theme, as, as we can see in this picture, analysis mm -hmm. of the visual motion and visual control of action, while the ventral visual field and the recognition of object. Those are steam, the area MT is also known as V5 or M5, or the middle temporal lobe. So in an area known as V5 or M5, strong evidence indicates that specialized processing of object motion takes place in this area. So neurons in area MT have large receptive fields that respond to stimulus in a narrow range of direction. The ventral stem, man, on the other hand, one of the most studied areas in the ventral stem is the area V4. V4, this one, receives input from the blob and third blob regions of the straight cortex via relay in V2. V so many of the cells are used in the orientation selective and color selective. So numerous hypotheses have been suggested to explain the genesis of visual hallucination. This has been summarized and categorized by Asad and Sapiro as mm -hmm. due to psychophysiologic, wherein there is disturbance of the brain structures. Uh, it can also be due to psychobiochemical, wherein there's disturbance of neurotransmitter. And it can be psychodynamic, wherein there's an emergence of the unconscious to the consciousness. So visual hallucination, visual hallucination can be the result of all three processes, given the interplay among disturbance of brain anatomy, brain chemistry, prior experiences, and psychological mechanism has explained all types of visual hallucination. However, the similarity of visual hallucination that are associated with seemingly diverse conditions suggests as a, a final common pathway. For the psychophysiology, um, Manford and Underman summarized the pathophysiologic mechanism to account for complex visual hallucination. Irritation of the, vert, of the primary visual cortex, particularly the Broadman's area 17, causes simple elementary visual hallucination, while irritation of the visual association Cortices, which are the Broadman areas 18 and 19, causes more complex visual hallucination. These data are supported by both electroencephalographic recordings and direct stimulation experiment. 
um, lesions that cause differentiation of the visual system can also be one of the possible causes. The interruption or destruction of the apparent connection of nerve cells of the visual system caused by lesions leading to the removal of normal inhibitory process and particle input to visualization areas leading to complex hallucination as a release phenomenon. Another one is lesion of the brain stem or the reticular activating system. Uh, visual hallucinations are frequent in those with certain sleep disorder occurring more often when drowsy. This suggests that reticular activating system plays a part in visual hallucination, although the precise mechanism has still not fully been established. So there are two neurotransmitters particularly important in visual hallucination. These are the serotonin and acetylcholine. They're concentrated in the visual thalamic nuclei and visual cortex. So this is my light slide spot talk. So walang okay. dopamine. Um, in, in some area, uh, in some, ano po, doc, meron pong dopamine, doc. Pero ito daw yung pinaka particular, imp particularly important. Meron pong, and in some article na nabasa ko, doc, may, may dopamine pa din po. Pero among the, ano, neurotransmitter, in one of the articles na nabasa ko, these two daw are the most important. For the, ah, nag-try ko. Ah, Okay, sige. But don't forget kasi, di ba, yung if ever sa atin, di ba, ang most naman na neurotransmitter, no, number one na nagkukos ng psychosis would be si dopamine. So, meron pa rin, no, dopamine would be part then no, in the creation or the symptom of visual hallucination. Have you tried to research, Mekong? Like for example, or ganon yung yari sa visual system or pathway pag pag specifically for um substance induced or something sa brain. Then ano mga lesions sa brain ang nakakos ng visual hallucinations? Sa mga substance, dok ni ko na nasali dok. Uh huh. Have you encountered yung ano yung ano ngayon yung Charles Bonnet syndrome yung parang phantom vision habang nag ano ka na nagre research ka about this one Charles Bonnet syndrome to uh oo -oh. na encounter mo yan Kasi parang, Wala, Doc. <laughs> uh -oh. Meron kasi parang explanation, no? You can, pwede natin i-add sana dito. No, pwede mo siyang i-add sa next Mekong, no? Meron siyang, uh, can, you can read on like visual hallucin hallucinatory syndromes and the anatomy of the visual brain, no? Para mas ma-figure out natin, no? Like for example, anong, anong nangyayari doon sa temporal area, sa... Uh, parietal area, parang gano'n na related to ano, vision. Okay? Kasi uh, I, I, para mas ano natin, uh, same true with other reporters, no? pa para mas ma ano natin, mas ma-apply natin. No? Although meron naman, pero mas mas konti kasi yung nalagay yung meko, mas maganda sana yung mas ma-appreciate natin as psychiatrist. No? Although, di ba, this is purely para siyang more of um, neuro, talaga neuro anatomy. So, para mas ma-appreciate natin yung parts ng brain na yun, we have to apply it sa field natin. No? So, for example, eto na nga, dito na tayo siya, sa visual pathway. So, ano na ba ang relevant sa atin, di ba? Is visual hallucinations. So, ano yung mga parts na yun? Merong mga studies niyan, Mekong. Oo. Tapos, anong nangyayari pag, ano, di ba? Anong part ang responsible sa mga colors, shapes, ganun. Di ba yun yung mga ano natin pag may visual hallucinations tayo? O yun. You want to add that before mag start tayo sa visual, as a auditory, diba? Auditory pathway tayo next, no? Tama ba? 
Oo, mm-hmm. yun din yung gagawin ng next reporter para mas kasi yung book parang limited siya no. So we have to supply from other ano um sources no para mas ma-appreciate natin to para siyang hindi purely neuro lang talaga. Okay? Ma- marami yan mekong no maski i-describe mo lang sa amin. Okay? Sige pa daw. Like, uh, for example, meron baka merong mga, ano, mga experiments with um, mga animals, no? Like, for example, pag ganito, um, anong, ano nila sa MRI findings or FMRI findings nila, okay? Para mas maano natin, mas, although, no, ang part of the neuro na ano mo naman siya na, na discuss mo naman siya mas ma, it's okay na na discuss mo siya ng thoroughly but doon sa application sa sa site na part yun yung mas maganda din sa next kasi ano lang din naman we still have time pa sana okay sa next na lang para mas maano yeah. natin mas ma-appreciate natin so yun i'll give you a few minutes for that mga 15 minutes siguro may kung next no to present as that and then um for the next reporter na din. Okay? May mga questions pa kayo kay Mekong? None po for me daw. Oo. Pwede pala talaga natin isabay na lang, no? Para mas mahapol. Kasi we still have enough time for research. Okay? Titingnan ko yan next time, no? Para mas mahabol natin yung topics. Okay? Uh, meron pang other ano comments from other residents? Sino yung next reporter? Uh, ako nyo po, Doc. Uh, me po, Doc. Ako po yung next uh, brain po. Na yung auditory Uh-oh. po, Doc. Ayun. Ayun, me. Yun na lang yung, ano mo. Uh, try to, ano, find, no, or search for that. Yung mga application niya kung sa auditory. So, Ano nangyayari sa auditory pathway pag may auditory hallucination, gano'n, no? Or, like, for example, ano yung para mas makalearn tayo, okay? Yes, brother. Alright, sige. Um, yun lang, Mekong. And then, you send to me your PowerPoint na lang, no? Uh, for your example, uh, this coming May, no? So, kung ano yung matatapos natin na topic, Yun yung i-include ko sa examination, no? Okay? Twice naman kayo mag-e-exam, no? Yes, but no. Okay, sige. Alright, sige. If na, now we can end na this didactics. Thank you, Mekong. Thank you, Pado. Okay, sige. Thank you, Pado.